Welcome to the Birds and the Bees podcast. This is Braxton Dutson. That's the key. People aren't talking about it. Everybody needs to know that porn is not a documentary. It's not like if we don't talk to kids about sex and sexuality, they're not going to hear about it. They're just not going to hear about it from us. They have tons of questions. They just don't know how to ask them. All you have to do is be one chapter ahead. You don't have to know everything. Mm. Just one chapter ahead of wherever your child is. Hey everyone, this is Braxton Dutson, your host of Birds and Bees podcast. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and certified sex therapist. This podcast is meant to bring you information from top professionals in relational and sexual health. I want you to have all the tools, tips, and tricks you need to improve your relationship with your partner, feel confident in teaching your children about sexual health, and know that none of us are alone in these experiences. We're all learning together. If this is your first time joining us, welcome to The Hive. Thank you for tuning in. We're so glad to have you here. And if you're a longtime Hive mate, welcome back. It's great to have you with us once again. This is so exciting because today we are achieving our goal by bringing you Reva Cook. She's coming on the show today to talk to us about making peace with your body. The conversation we have in this interview, really, I say it on multiple times, that it blows my mind because it's really difficult to wrap my head around it. So I'm excited to share it with you. You may have to listen to it a couple times. I know I've had to listen to it on a couple different occasions because the information Reva is giving to us is all about acceptance and being able to love who we are right now. So my favorite part is that I learned so much in this episode and I think you're going to really enjoy it as well. Reva has got a great way of explaining this. And I'm excited to share this with you. Remember that I love it when you send episodes to family and friends. It is a great way to spread the love from the hive. And I wanted to read a, uh, a review that was recently posted up. This review comes from Snozberry Tree, which I personally love the name. Snozberries taste like snozberries. <laughs> Thank you so much, Snozberry Tree, for leaving this, uh, this review. Um, they say, another great sex-positive podcast. They give us five stars and it says, I always appreciate a podcast that is not only sex positive, but has a professional in it explaining to us the ins and outs of everything sexually related. The information here is a benefit to society. I highly recommend this to anyone who cares about retaining and fostering healthy sexual relationships, whether that be a monogamous, non-monogamous, or any non-traditional relationship. Thank you so much, Snozberry Tree. This means so much to me that you took the time out to leave a review and let us know what your thoughts are. I'm glad you're enjoying the show, and I hope that you continue to be a part of the hive as a hive mate uh, as we all grow together. So thank you so much. If you have a, something you want to share with us, please consider leaving us a review. That helps us so much on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Spotify. It helps us grow to even more and more places. We're international, everybody. It's so cool. We've got so many people listening from all over the world, especially in Australia. Again, shout out to you guys. Thanks so much. It is growing so big out there. Uh, Thank you for sharing this with all your friends. In Canada, we're growing in Canada too, as well as the UK. The UK is growing pretty fast as well. So I just shout out to all y'all who are listening from across the world. Thank you so much. Um, again, thank you for spreading the word. Right now, you can join the conversation with us on Facebook and um, on also on Instagram. Um, and you can also give us a call. Give me a call. Um, that's 385-449-1818. You can also send a text there. Give me your thoughts, um, episode ideas, whatever it is that you would like to know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Great interview coming up. Can't wait to share it with you. You're going to love it. Now on to the interview with Reva Cook. Birds and Bees podcast. This is Braxton Dutson, and I'm here with Reva Cook. Thanks for coming, Reva. Oh, I'm so glad to meet with you finally. <laughs> this has been an exciting thing that uh, that I'm, well, this this topic that we're talking about. One, it fascinates me because as we've talked just a little bit, you and I, about what, uh, what we're going to be covering today, I found myself jumping back into not a bo- body positive frame thinking. I was asking her questions earlier. I was like, so, okay, so how about this and this? And she's like, hold the phone. Now we're moving into, <laughs> and what was, what was the other one? We had body positivity and, and, and change and change. So like, I was moving into change. We just like zoom there. And that kind of comes from just the culture and the society that we live in. It is so hard for us to grasp the idea of acceptance and of being okay with how things are. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, it's so interesting where that kind of comes from. I'm not entirely sure, but it just seems like this sort of societal 
soup that we swim in, we all want to be different. Mm -hmm. And body positivity kind of flips that on its ear. And it's a hard concept sometimes for us to grasp. So sometimes when I talk to people about it, I'm like, just see if you can hold this idea. Just see if you can hold it. Let it be with you for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And try not to let your brain run to other places because it just does. Run into change. I couldn't believe how fast my mind went there. I was like, yeah, body positivity. This is great. And then when you start to diet and I, you were like, hold the phone. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Different topic, Braxton. <laughs> Different topic. So know that know that when uh, when you're listening to this podcast, those that, uh, that are listening right now, find yourself being aware of when your mind starts to move into the change because it is so ingrained in us so ingrained and that's a huge part of working on body positivity is becoming aware of the way that we think Mm -hmm. and the way that we talk and the way that we respond to ideas about bodies definitely and i so i want to get into it but i also want to um i haven't introduced you or anything i'd love to have you tell us our conversations go we just like (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, and I'm so excited about it. So I'm, I'm curious about what, what got you into body positivity? I mean, you're an LCSW, mm-hmm. um, working at the healing group. How did you get to the place that you're at right now? What's where yeah. are your passions at? Yeah, so I do work here at the healing group with you, which is awesome. This is <laughs> such a great place to work. Um, I also work for Intermountain Healthcare, which for those of you who aren't in Utah, it is the largest healthcare organization in Utah. Um, And it's a comprehensive healthcare organization. And I work, one of my jobs is with them. And I work as their, an LCSW in their Live Well Center down in Provo, Utah. And a Live Well Center is kind of like, it's kind of like a combo gym, combo nutrition clinic, combo therapy clinic, combo doctor's office. And one stop shop. It kind, yeah, it is. And we run programs for helping people improve their lifestyles really holistically. They have classes taught by me and by a dietitian. So we cover behavioral wellness and mental wellness as well as nutrition. They have personal trainers that can help them with the exercise stuff. We wow. have a doctor that can watch for, you know, if there are medical issues going on. And so I teach a lot of classes through them, and I also see people for individual counseling there to kind of help them with working through the mental stuff of behavioral change. Hmm. And body positivity is something that kind of plays into both of my roles as a therapist with the healing group and at the Live Well Center because I, just about every person I visit with, whether it's my maternal mental health moms, which is my specialty at the healing group, um, or my older women who are going through stage of life changes, which is another area that I specialize in, or our clients that come into the Live Well Center, everybody struggles with their body. Oh, yeah. Everybody does. In fact, I don't think I have met a person over the age of three that is okay with their body. Oh man. (laughs) I think I agree with you. I agree with you. I don't think I've met with anyone that has not been able to say, I would, I would change this about myself. Yeah. So I started looking more into it. I was asked to do, to weigh in on a segment that a KSL television station here was doing about a woman who was struggling with her body image. And they just asked for some Uh, you know, mental health weigh in. So I did more research on that um, and was like, you know what, the information I'm learning here will be helpful to me as a person, Mm -hmm. as a mom, as a therapist, as an educator and an advocate. So I'm like, this is good stuff. So I just kind of kept going with it Mm -hmm. and had lots of great conversations um, with with different people and um, with my sisters because all of us have struggled with this kind of thing. And just the things that I've learned have been so fascinating and so helpful. Yeah. And in some of our conversations, this is where this kind of came about. And I'm excited to have you on here and to be able to address this because this is not just a 
um, a, f- a female issue. This is not just a male issue. This isn't anyone that's, you know, in any part of life. This is something that is being a part of our society and being a human mm-hmm. that we have to deal with. And so I'm curious what, right. if we're going to define body positivity, what, how do we define body positivity? Okay. So body positivity is about loving and accepting and being okay with ourselves as we are being okay with ourselves right now, being okay with ourselves as we were, being okay with ourselves as we will be. Hmm. It's about accepting, not condemning or judging our weaknesses or our flaws. It's allowing them to just be and for us to be okay with them. We don't have to wait to love and accept our body. And you mentioned this isn't just a female issue. Oh, no, it is not. Body positivity isn't about gender. It isn't about race or color or age or about disability. It is about everything. Mm-hmm. And one one way that kind of like really resonated um, body positivity home to me a little bit is I was um, actually talking to one of my sisters and she said, that a way that's helpful to her to think about it is that we can love and value our body simply because it is our body and it is the way through which we experience life. It is the way through which we experience joy and pain and relationships. It is the vessel through which we move through this existence. And that makes it worthy of appreciation. That is so cool. And I think one of the things you just said there too, a little bit, going back just a little bit, was the being okay with your body right now and in the past. That that just blew me away right there. I was like, oh my goodness. When we look back, like, oh, I was such a fatty or, oh my goodness, can you believe how thin I was? Like, oh, I wish that I'm better now or, oh my heavens, this has never changed. And you can, being okay with who you were as, as a kid, as five years ago, as 10 minutes ago, as right now. That's that's amazing to me. Yeah. I was actually visiting with someone the other day and they were we were talking about this concept and I asked her when was the first time you remember not liking your body? And it was in childhood. Like Wow. Her legs were fatter than the kid next to her. And Aww. and she's like, you know, I didn't like my body when I was a kid. And I didn't like my body when I was a teenager. And I don't like my body now. And I'm like, this is, your body is completely different sizes and shapes in each of those areas. The difference, the difference, the issue here is not your body. The issue is what is going on in your head. Mm-hmm. Because you didn't like your body when it was four feet tall. <laughs> And you don't like your body when it's now. And so it's not about what your body actually is. Mm -hmm. It's not about what your shape it is or what size it is. It's about what's happening in your head. Mm -hmm. Wow. So a lot of it just stems from this desire or this, uh, this thought that there's this perfect part of you that you're trying to achieve and you're just not there yet. Yeah. And that idea that you bring up right there is, um, what's called body image discrepancy. Oh. And kind of the opposite of body positivity would be body negativity, right? Mm-hmm. Well, body image discrepancy is where we feel like our body doesn't match up to what we want our body to look at. So you talk about ideals, and ideals are a big part of this. Mm-hmm. They're a big part of being able to recognize why what are my that you know when we start to talk about how do we work on body positivity recognizing where we come from with those thoughts and with those ideals is really really important Mm -hmm. but the first idea is just being open to that idea that i can be okay with my body the way it is i don't have to put off being happy with my body and sometimes we think of body positivity as just relating to how much you weigh or what shape you are or what Mm. size you are, you know, and I have, um, I have a birth defect. Your podcast listeners can't see this, Uh but I don't have fingers on one hand. I was born that way. Mm -hmm. Would anyone ever tell me, you know, you shouldn't like yourself until you get those fingers grown. Oh, that sounds horrible. (laughs) I would have to spend my entire life 
not liking my body because yeah. they're never going to grow. Mm-hmm. And I don't see much difference between that and, you know, you shouldn't like your body until you lose 10 pounds or 50 or 100. So it's the perceived control. We have all the control in the world to be able to lose weight or to be able to do this or have this physique or, but then some, someone coming up to be like, Hey, would you grow fingers? People wouldn't say that. And that makes a lot of sense with what you're saying is like, why are we putting ourselves through something that's like, Oh, I will only be happy when my body looks, acts, is a certain way because that seems to always be changing and you can go your whole life feeling completely unhappy with who you are. And what a waste that would be. Holy cow. Yeah. What a waste. And to a certain degree, there's some similarities with our bodies. We're each born with the body that we have, Mm -hmm. with our genetics, our body type, all of that. And this is where we start sliding into that change thing. Yes. See how that was quick exact- it goes? Oh, my heavens. That, so that's then exactly we're like, me. well, but this and I could do that and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. You don't have to go there to love your body. You can just be okay with the way it is. That can exist in an entirely different realm from change. Let's just separate those out completely mm-hmm. and and it, it, we can get to this in a little bit, but when we when we get that body acceptance stuff happening, mm-hmm. magic things happen in our head. Wow. So being able to accept that. And this is, so I want to slow that down because this is really important for what we're going to continue on with in the, in the podcast is that separating this out, what, uh, what Reva just said was being like, whoa, if we can take that and just say right now, as you're driving, as you're listening to the podcast, doing dishes, whatever you're doing right now, allowing yourself to be okay and in love with your body for what it is and that it's allowing you to drive, that it's allowing you to sit on the couch, that it's allowing you to be where you're at and it's carried you to this place that you're at right now, even being able to download this podcast and, and listen to it. Wow, what a, what a cool thing that you can honor and love your body for. That Put that in a separate place of you can just hang on to that. And avoid the the immediate responses of, yeah, but. We go down that yabbit trail. Yeah. Start hopping down the yabbit trail. (laughs) The yabbit trail. I've never heard that. The yabbit trail. The yabbit trail. (laughs) And I think we can accept our bodies, even if our bodies can't do anything. Mm -hmm. One way that can kind of help us start appreciating our bodies is thinking about the things that can do. That can also start to get us into trouble. What if your body all of a sudden can't do those things? Ooh. What if you become really ill? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can't drive your car anymore. You can't go running. You can't, you can't do all of the things you did before. Your body still, you still can love it. It can still be acceptable because it houses you. Mm -hmm. And that will be true until the day you die. So its value comes just from you're in it. And it is how you are in this world. Mm -hmm. I know that's a hard idea to grasp. So sometimes one of the kind of baby steps towards working towards that is noticing the things our body can do. Mm -hmm. But then we want to make sure we're not putting our value on the things we can do. Okay, separating those. We want to put our value on just being Mm -hmm. because we're here because we're here the fact that we're here doesn't matter what we're doing see i even jumped into that it's like look at all the things we We can do you're right it is i work with uh with people that uh, experience erectile dysfunction or impotence Mm -hmm. um or feel like you know there's vaginal lubrication that's not happening and all of a sudden it's like now we can't we can't we can't and then we just stop there versus being happy about us being alive and then exploring what things Um, there I go again, trying to go into what we can do. Maybe you can't do anything. (laughs) And when, and when you start to go down that path, then shame builds up Mm -hmm. and dissatisfaction with our life and ourself. And it pulls us in this whole kind of negative spiral and cycle, which makes life so miserable. Completely. So miserable. Yeah. It'd be negative to, to have it be negative like that all the time. As we talk about these separating these three um, compartments, what is the importance of having them separate? We've got 
body positivity, being okay with your body and being okay with who you are and that you are just like, that's great. You are you. And then also being all right with, um, who you are and what you can do. And even if you, you know, what you can and can't do. And then also not moving into the, the part of change and knowing like what you would like to be able to do. How come we're separating all three of these? What's, what's the importance of that? So, One of the interesting things that we've learned through research about body positivity is that, and about, you know, when you're learning about body positivity, you're also learning about body negativity. Um, But a poor body image is linked to all kinds of things. It's linked to increased anxiety, increased depression, increased risk of eating disorders, Wow. Um, increased suicidal behavior, especially in teenagers. It's huge. Yeah. So it's not just, oh, I want to feel warm and fuzzy about myself. And one of the things that we didn't mention is body positivity doesn't mean that you think every single part of you is great. Okay. Um, there's a lot there's a lot of acceptance of flaws. It's about being okay with how you are. You don't have to like figure out how to love your tummy bulge if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. It's just about being like, well, it is is there and it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Um, A really cool research study that was done recently by Chapman University linked body image to happiness. And they found that about 15% of men and 20% of women were extremely dissatisfied with their with their bodies. Mm -hmm. And that how they viewed their body was a strong predictor of overall life satisfaction. Whoa. The, it was, for women, the third strongest predictor. The only two stronger ones were financial situation and satisfaction with their romantic partners. Hmm. For men, body image was the second strongest predictor of life satisfaction. No way. Only following financial satisfaction. So in how you look at your entire life, how you experience happiness in your life, how you view your body is huge. Completely. I, that it's blows totally my mind that, that is number two for men. Yeah. It also found, the study also found that dissatisfaction with their bodies had a negative effect on each participant's sex life and their self-esteem. So it, it affects every part of, some, of your life. Yeah. It affected how they experienced the world. It affected how they experienced their relationships, Mm -hmm. which is really amazing considering it's something that's happening entirely in our head. Yeah, that we're creating it. Yeah. In fact, body image issues were first discovered in uh, 1911 when a neurologist whose name was Dr. Head, which Mm -hmm. cracks me up. Yeah. (laughs) He noticed that women who habitually wore tall hats, mm-hmm. tall feathered hats were the thing oh, at the gotcha. time. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, that, that, uh, that, yeah, yeah, those really uh-huh. big things. He noticed that they would duck as they went through doorways, even when they weren't wearing the hat. Oh. Because they had this mental construct. Their mental self was still wearing the hat. Uh-huh. And a 2013 study in Norway kind of replicated that with women who have anorexia and noticed they would turn to the side to get through a narrow doorway, even though they really could fit through it just fine. Oh, no way. So our the way we view our bodies is in our head. Uh-huh. It's in our head, and yet it can affect all of this outside stuff and that, with our lives. And that ends up uh, showing up in the ways that when we see how we see our flaws show up. That we're we're constantly looking for ways to support that we do have that flaw is almost what it sounds like. Sideway through the mental or through the door, if something happens, I, I think of Tommy Boy when he sits on the bench and the bench breaks. And he's like, could have done without that. Like he's the whole movie's about him being, you know, a, a big guy, and that that being a support to well, oh, there it is again. I'm too fat mm-hmm. or whatever it may be. But this is all this construct going on in our heads. Yeah. And the American Psychological Association has found through their research studies that body image results in mental and physical health consequences. We mentioned the eating disorders, mm-hmm. but it also is related to an increased risk of obesity. Whoa. So it's almost like the more you hate on yourself, the worse things get for you. So 
that's pretty significant. That's huge. If you can change all of those things by working on accepting yourself, that's that's a pretty good ROI right there. Yeah, no joke. There's there's no side effects, no mm-hmm. negative side effects to accepting yourself as you are. No. There's no cost to it. So contrary to pos- like this popular mm-hmm. belief of if we if we accept ourselves the way that we are, we won't change. We will probably get worse. Those are some of the thoughts that come into a lot of people's heads. Like if we just accept this, then then we're accepting defeat and then right. bad. There's this whole different space between acceptance and change. Uh-huh. Whole different space. And it's kind of related to the concept of radical acceptance, which you and I both probably use uh-huh. in teaching our clients about in dialectical behavior therapy. Accepting how things are doesn't mean that you can't wish they will be different in the future. Mm-hmm. Those two things can be completely separate items. It's about being non judgmental about what is. Non judgmental about that and allowing for there to be a space for change. But yes, also understanding exactly. okay, there's this push for change, mm-hmm. but then there's also this push for I need to allow and accept myself and accept things how they are right now. Mindfulness, being present allowing and non-judgmental yes. along and, with yeah. there can be change but they're 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 separate totally separate yes and the fascinating thing okay now we're gonna we're gonna try not to slide down the change rabbit hole here because uh-huh. we're gonna talk about change <laughs> okay the fascinating thing is is when you have that acceptance piece and it is there and you have the change piece over here once you have the acceptance piece Then you can decide, you have the mental space and the clarity to decide what changes you really want to make in your life. And you're not making them in a reactive fashion out of self-hate or loathing or because your friend did or because social media is showing you things. Mm -hmm. You make them, when you make choices from a place of acceptance with what you are, that is creates fundamentally different energy and different choices than when you make choices from a place of what you are not. Wow. So the big change is being able to say, this is where I'm at and this is where I'd like to go versus I'm not there and I want to be there. Yeah. If we make choices, if we want to sit in our place of change and try to be like, make our body image and the way we see ourselves dependent on change, Mm -hmm. that is that is not going to be very effective for us. And we're going to live in a lot of, of misery while Mm -hmm. we do it. You know, if you're sitting there and you're like, I, I, you know what will really help me feel better about myself. You know, when, when I am able to like run a mile, that Mm -hmm. will make me feel so much better about myself. Basically you're saying I can't be happy. I can't like myself until I accomplish said thing. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you come from, I like and accept my body how it is. And and maybe I maybe I want to run a mile. Great. Yeah. You can be happy the whole time you're working on running that mile. Like look at what I'm doing. This is so great versus well, I only got 3 quarters of a mile. Great. I didn't get it. So now I can't be happy today. Yeah. So if we can make that foundation of being okay with our body, with our flaws, with our shortcomings, with the things we can't do, the things we can do. We can come from a place of being okay with that. Mm-hmm. It actually makes it easy, easier for us to make the changes we want to make. And we will make them from a place that is more sustainable because we wow. will be making them from a place of, I am okay, but I'm also choosing to do this thing. Wow, what a that's a mind shift too. Total mind shift. Huge. And it is a slippery is a slippery fish. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> like, <laughs> that is a hard thing to hold on to, mm-hmm. especially when you have grown up in environments like all of us have of this is the ideal way to be. You have to be like this and that's how that's how your life is meaningful. That's how you'll be happy if you look like this. Mm-hmm. If you can do these things, Buy that this is product. that is happy. Yeah. 
that is, that is that is exactly how this commercialism and and mm-hmm. as we're speaking to America, but also across the world, that the commercialism piece is mm-hmm. if we can convince the buyers that they are not enough or that their happiness isn't where it's at until our product is introduced, then we sell product. Yes. What a shift it would be if the beauty industry, instead of selling based on dissatisfaction, mm-hmm. what if people engaged in the beauty industry from a place of satisfaction, from a place of, I am okay. I am okay if I don't wear makeup. I am okay if I am 500 pounds. I am okay exactly how I am, Mm -hmm. then I can choose what other things I choose to be a part of. For lots of other reasons, besides I'm trying to make myself feel worthy. Feel worthy. I can engage in those things because they're fun. Mm -hmm. Because they're self-expression. Because I like makeup. Because, yeah, yeah, because makeup is nice. Because, Uh Because I feel good when I exercise. We engage in those things in an entirely different manner than we do when we're doing it from a place of being less than. Yeah, completely. I, and I, it, as you're saying that about the uh, the makeup and stuff, I find that it, a perfect example is the the Maybelline commercials where maybe she's born with it, maybe it's Maybelline. Yeah. She might, it might be her, but it's probably not. It's probably Maybelline because pretty girls wear Maybelline. Mm-hmm. I want to be pretty. I want yeah. this. Or the, or the L'Oreal commercial about you're worth it. Oh, I think Mm -hmm. that's L'Oreal. You're worth it. Yeah. Um, Yeah, you are. Yeah. You don't, you don't need this to be worth it though. You don't. You don't (laughs) need it. But that's the message, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, If you buy this product, you'll be worth it. You'll feel like you're worth it. Mm -hmm. What if you felt like you were worth it? And then you decided I wanted to buy that product. Yeah. It's a total paradigm shift. It is. And it's simple to say, you know, like, oh, okay. What if I just want that? Oh, so simple to say. And that's why I think that's why it's such the slippery fish because it's like, oh, I can accept myself and then I want this. And it's like, yes, are we, am I wanting it because I want to feel happy or am I happy? And that sounds like a really cool thing that I would like. What is my purpose behind it to, right. to buy happiness or to expound on things that I enjoy? Exactly. Exactly. Am I going after happiness or is this I'm just using this to add to my existing happiness? Exactly. Am I chasing it or am I just owning it? And the chasing is where we get caught up in. I, I will, well, just as soon as I get this, that's going to be right, great. Right, right. And maybe that's where we want to talk about next is how do we, if we recognize this is an issue for us and we want to explore this idea of being okay with ourselves, mm-hmm. warts, beautiful parts, all of it. Yeah. We want to explore that idea. What are some actions we can take that will support that? Because every belief is supported by action. Mm-hmm. And so our body negativity is supported by action. Yeah. The way that we react to it. Yeah. So we can, we can make some choices yeah. about changing that. <laughs> and there are some actions that, that can be helpful with that. Yeah. What, uh, what what might be some of those actions that we can take? Okay. So one of those that you've mentioned is media, <laughs> right? Nice. <laughs> okay. So here is such an interesting idea. There was, there was a series of research studies that were done in um, 2009, 2009, 2013, 2015, 2016, about the effects of media on body type. Okay. okay? And the research is crystal clear mm-hmm. that... Higher body image concerns in both teenagers and adult women and in men is related to social media use. There's a higher internalization of the thin ideal Mm -hmm. body type and correspondence to the amount of time spent on the internet. Wow. So those things are related and they're related for everyone. So being exposed to it. Being exposed to media and to social media, mass media, those types of things increase the likelihood and the depth to which you internalize the thin ideal. And that increases 
dissatisfaction with one's body. Mm -hmm. But here was the other really cool study yeah. that was done in 2016. So these researchers, it's the same group of researchers, and they keep like trying to pinpoint this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this was the coolest thing in a 2016 research study found that if people viewed non-appearance related social media, mm -hmm. it did not negatively affect their body image. So the type of social media you're engaging in is critical. No way. So if you're if you're focused on motorcycles, trucks, gardening, cooking, things that don't create the body image or show a lot of body mm -hmm. image, then that doesn't impact you as much as if you are following celebrities, um, workout methods, things along those lines where you're seeing these people with these quote unquote ideal body types and images. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. So when the social networks that we use and engage in, um, and when we talk about social networks, we're including all media, magazines, okay. television shows. Not just social media. I mean, gotcha. the, all of that stuff. When it is focused on non-appearance based stuff, mm -hmm. we don't experience a greater dissatisfaction or an internalization of ideal body types. We don't experience those things. Wow. Isn't that cool? That's amazing. That's amazing that knowing what to, what you're exposing yourself to or what you're engaging in, even just the fact that, okay, so you, so you enjoy movies or you enjoy the reality TV shows and things like that, having that understanding that it is affecting the way that you feel about yourself, knowing that you might be able to, or you might be in your room one day and be like, oh my gosh, I'm so blah, add whatever it is. And if you know that you're watching um, or being exposed to and you've got Seventeen Magazine or uh, Cosmopolitan or whatever, and you're trying to obtain something that you can go, oh, oh, I need to be, I need to be okay with who I am. I am great with who I am right now because I am who I am. And those things are probably significantly adding to the reason why I'm feeling some distress right now. They affect us. A lot. They really do affect us. So one of the actions we can take is to call our media accounts. Call our media accounts. Call them. Oh, call them. I gotcha. And like, so being so able you'll to... go through your in, so like go through your Instagram. Uh -huh. How many of these things are appearance focused? Yeah. Just get rid of them. Mm -hmm. Just get rid of them, and that will increase how you feel about your body. And that's and what if you're science like, is saying. If you're like, I can't, I can't unfollow them. They're my favorite. Just do an experiment then. Mm -hmm. Take them off your Instagram for a month. They'll still be there. Yeah. If you decide to go back to them, but take away appearance related things that you follow and that you view mm -hmm. and see how, see how you feel about yourself. See how you feel about that. Wow. Which kind of leads us to another action we can take. Mm -hmm. And that is to set goals and to focus on non appearance related things. So set goals that aren't related to appearance. Mm -hmm. Um, develop qualities and characteristics that are not related to appearance. What might some of those be? For example, um, if you, if you wanted to, you're wanting to feel good about yourself and you're also wanting to change some things, you would not set a goal to, I want to lose 10 pounds. Cause that is coming from the deficit. That is coming from the deficit and it's appearance based. Mm -hmm. Instead, maybe you'd be like, I am going to learn new ways to eat fruits and vegetables. Okay. I want to learn something new. Or a goal of, I want to learn how to be a better friend. Okay. I want to learn how to knit. I want to learn how to, you know, talk Adding to, to my kids about this subject or that subject. Mm -hmm. Just Goals that aren't appearance-based. Goals that aren't appearance-based. And I know I, I can even hear some some of the people I've worked with or even some friends that are like, yeah, but you're just rewording things to just, how much is like, oh, I'm going to learn how to, how to, you know, eat fruits and vegetables and deep in the back of their mind, they're like, to lose 10 pounds. 
Is that the it's, art? That's the art of that, this. This is where you get we get to watch where we're sliding into it. <laughs> that's the slippery slope. It is such a slippery slope. Mm-hmm. So, but it's it's starting to focus on the things that that we are, not the mm-hmm. things that we look like. Things that we are, not the things that we look like. I I really like that, especially because if you if your goal, so again, we can hold the the space of I would like to change. And I can accept who I am right now. Some of those thoughts would be, if you are wanting to lose 10 pounds, and we're coming from the deficit approach, you know, like I want to lose 10 pounds. There are creams, there are workout programs, there's everything that will promise you that you can lose this. There's a lot of people that will sell you a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. You can can buy your way to try and lose 10 pounds and stuff. And the message behind all of those things is you buy this. You lose 10 pounds, you get happy. Yeah, and you're enough. And let's flip that. You'll be sexy. Mm -hmm. Let's let's be enough and see where that leads us. Yeah, and creating long change. Yeah. I think that's the cool part about it is if it's like, okay, I get 10 pounds and it's like, I have to go through this two week of no sugar and no this and I deny myself all these different things and sweet, I've attained 10 pounds. And then we get off of that. I kind of think of the Jenny Craig diet. You know, you're drinking their stuff and it works for, you know, because you're only drinking what they're allowing in the calorie lot. Sure, that that can work. However, if you decide that like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore and we haven't created the change of I'm okay with who I am, then all of a sudden when our body starts to shift again, we start to move from, oh my gosh, am I okay? Am I normal? Am I fine? I need something else. I need to be better. Versus, I have learned to to make a different habit. I would like to, you know, practice thirty minutes of of walking outside so I can be in the sunshine because I love being in the sunshine. Versus, I'd like to lose ten pounds. Yeah, it's about starting to focus on inner, not mm-hmm. outer. Inner, not outer. I love inner, that. not outer. Well, we can keep going with um, different actions that we can do, and this one kind of focuses on inner and outer, and it's going to sound. Like the opposite of what I just said. Really? So it's going to mind blow me again? (laughs) Sometimes this is such a hard thing to grasp, but it can feel like we're contradicting ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so we have to kind of delve into it to see that we're not. So we want to focus on inner qualities, not outer qualities. Mm -hmm. At the same time, buy clothes that fit and you feel good in. So don't do the, these are my jeans after 10 pounds. Right. Right. You have the right to feel comfortable and attractive no matter what size you are. Yeah. And so when you buy things that fit you, for one thing, that's a step towards acceptance mm-hmm. of whatever it is. Yeah. It's a step toward acceptance. It's it's acknowledging this is where I'm at. And if it's things you feel good in, that supports you in feeling positive about wherever you're at. So that is an action that can be helpful in working towards body positivity, Mm -hmm. which is a pretty concrete one. So it's fairly, you know, go buy clothes that fit. Yeah. Wear your size. And be okay with it. (laughs) And, And let that be, let that be okay. We're talking about how hard this is to grasp. And one of the reasons is because it requires a great deal of insight and watching what's happening in our head. Yeah. So sometimes one of the easiest ways to start that shift is to stop talking about bodies at all. That is going to be tough. So and when, so how this would view, how this would be, look like, uh-huh. is instead of when you get in the mirror, get dressed and look in the mirror and be like, oh, fits too tight Mm -hmm. so then you'd be like oh i have to think of something nice to say about myself that can be really hard so just go to a place of neutrality first so instead of going to the opposite side i'm not going to make comments about my body i'm not going to make comments about other people's bodies Mm -hmm. i am not going to talk about bodies at all it's like a it can it has like a fast on talking about bodies oh man it's going without talking without talking bodies one of the things that I found has been most helpful for me in trying to change this language, <clears throat> especially when someone loses weight in my immediate reaction or when someone is finally like getting their goal of gaining some weight, um, my immediate reaction to that is like, oh my gosh, you look so thin. Right. And that is so detrimental. It in, like, reinforces body negativity. It does. It does. 
And one of the things that I've been actively trying to change is the, wow, you look like this, you look like you're, you're being very healthy. It looks like you're vibrant, things like that, or like things that don't necessarily, and I know that's or, still right on there, but I'm trying nice to change. It's nice to see you today. <laughs> It's nice to see you today. Like, like, this is so ingrained in us, right? I know. And this, that's why it's so hard. But I'm trying to get away from so, that. So, <laughs> so hard. The payoffs are big for us. If we As can research do it. is saying. Yeah. That's and, the and cool part. And it's not just because, you know, you'll feel nice. Feeling nice is awesome. But that re- relates to all kinds of positive domino effects with your life and with your health. Mm-hmm. So... Stop talking about bodies at all for a while. Wow. So that's taking me, I feel like I've just graduated into my other thing. So I'm not commenting on people's like weight loss and gain. I've moved into the, hey, you're looking healthy. That's still a comment on the body. So mm-hmm. now I just need to be like, hey, I love you. You're awesome. <laughs> and it really takes us to a place of much more meaningful stuff. Uh-huh. You know, it takes us, it leads us towards that inner thing, those inner things. How is your knitting going? actions that uh that they do or the things that they enjoy like following up with a friend and things like that versus compliments commenting. that are about who they are mm-hmm. versus what they look like yeah yeah funny person different traits different traits not body reactions it, does that even that even goes with like your hair looks this way you're all about bodies it's all about bodies isn't Holy, it hard that is that's tough it is really hard it's like a mind scramble right now Right? <laughs> like, okay, you're like, we can do this. Ooh, mind blow. This. I see the mind blow emoji above your head <laughs> right now. Yeah, but it, it kind of helps lead us towards, it It gives us a break from all of the judging and the compares, comparing and all of that that we do all of the time about bodies. It gives us a complete hard stop. Let's, let's do a reboot mm-hmm. and give ourselves a break train ourselves so that's not the first thing we think about not the first thing we focus on it is possible like i said i've been moving it is in my direction totally possible nobody said it's easy it's totally possible yeah this is really really useful for parents Mm -hmm. stop talking about your kid's body stop yeah don't which is hard because we're like oh you're so cute Mm mm-hmm what if instead you were like, it makes me happy to be around you. You have such a great laugh. Mm-hmm. And you're f- like, you're funny. I enjoy your jokes. You're really great at making me feel wonderful. Yeah. I mean, how, how does that like that? I'm thinking of that as a kid. And you're like, I do. I do. I make people feel good versus, yeah. oh, I look good today. And so I need to make sure that this outfit is something that I wear again. Or my worth is in my, my body. My worth is in my body. Yeah. Let, wow. Let's flip that. And this can be really hard because parents end up becoming uh, so insistent on my kid's too fat, my kid's too skinny, my kid's too this, my kid's too that, and start to get on this train of control. Like I'm the parent and my kid is now fat and so I need to have them change their body so that they become the skinny kid. Whether it's like I don't want them to be bullied, whatever reason you have – that is still causing harm to your child when you don't need to be the professional of It's, it's your still child. equating worth with body. Mm-hmm. Allow it to be. And we just, we're just worthy because, because we are. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious about as we're working on ourselves and we're like, I am worthy because I am and I am a good person and I am, an, I am who I am and I'm enough <laughs> right now as I am. When we have people around us that maybe haven't listened to this podcast or that aren't aware or haven't had the the chance to move into that and we, we're still getting these compliments of, oh my gosh, you look so thin. Oh my gosh, you looks like you gained some weight or whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. Are there ways to be able to approach th- these people and say, hey, I would really like it if you would not comment on my body and more about who I am? What are Do you have any, any ways to address that or approaches i think the only way to do it is directly straight up and setting a boundary and sometimes that's not a fight you want to fight i think if it i think as parents if parents are seeing that happen to their kids that's a fight they want to fight i can't tell you how many clients i have dealt with over the years who have had hurtful comments reverberating through their head for decades 
Decades. Decades. They remember what grandpa said. Ooh. They remember what their dad said. Mm-hmm. And it's, and, our, and those things stick with us. So I think if that's happening to your kid, you fight that fight. You say, you know what? We're not focusing on bodies anymore. Mm-hmm. He or she is great just how they are. We love them just how they are. Mm-hmm. We're not focusing on that anymore. I'd really appreciate it if you didn't make comments about their body. Yeah. And no comments. Head on. This is a boundary we're setting. And if you're an adult and you have people in your life who do that to you as well, whether it's a spouse or a, a parent, mm-hmm. um, if it's causing difficulty for you, it's okay to say, I would appreciate not talking about my body with you. Mm-hmm. Mind your own body. And that that goes with people complimenting you too, because it is, that's that slippery slope. If someone's like, you are looking so amazing because you did blank, then being able to hold that, be like, hey, like, I, I'm not I'm not focusing on my body in this because it's really easy to think like, oh, I'll okay, take all the compliments and then push away the negative, but we're still in that same cycle. We still are. And sometimes that's not an issue we want to get into. Sometimes we're just like, thanks. Yeah. You know, and accept it from the place that it's given, which mm-hmm. is they're trying to be kind to us. Yeah. Um, but it is, it starts to kind of messes with your head a little bit as you start to think about this, huh, Braxton? Yeah, very much so. I mean, it yeah. is it is a big paradigm shift. Yeah. And I'm curious about maybe some of the, uh, like the assumptions or the myths that tend to, uh, tend to show up when it comes to moving into body positivity. Uh, one of the things that I think of is like, if I, well, we talked about one where it was like, if I relax my standards, if I just accept for myself for who I am, then I'm going to, I'm going to lose it. Yeah. We have this idea that we must punish ourselves mm. in order, I don't know. Yeah. In order to be and like, we're still, well, we're starting, starting to slope into that change thing again. Yeah. That we have to punish ourselves or we won't do things. Mm-hmm. And I find that's generally not true. Yeah. You know, did you have to belittle yourself to get up and get showered this morning? No. 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 Did you have to be like, Braxton, man, you just, you never do anything right. That's why you have to go to work. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> nope. like that doesn't work really. No. And knowing motivations and change where it's like money might be a motivator, fear and pain are a motivator, but they are very short term, not long term motivations. When it's something is exciting, when something is done because you love it, that's a motivator for a motivation of like, I would like to be a great, you know, in my case, a, a great therapist. That's not, well, you're a stupid therapist now and you're dumb and you that's gonna can't not do anything. be helpful. No, it doesn't help <laughs> anything. And it doesn't give any type of confidence to start working with people. You, you cause more harm mm-hmm. than I do things because I am who I am and I, I enjoy being my best at whatever. Mm-hmm. I may be. Again, that's a trait, not me being a person. Right. Or not me being my in focused on my body or or things along those lines. Right, right. Another myth that's really common is if people really see the real me, they're gonna be repulsed. Mm. Well, people are already seeing the real us. Yeah. They really are. And what we appreciate most about other people is and when we feel closest to them is when we see that they're not perfect because we really know that we're not perfect. Mm -hmm. So it, when we kind of can drop that guard down a little bit, it actually makes people like us more. So, you know, you don't have to have Mm -hmm. that perfect swimsuit body that you see on Instagram. You can take your kids to the pool in whatever size you are in whatever you choose to. Mm -hmm. And, you may get some negative responses from other people, but in general, you will probably see people who will be like, wow, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I think that goes to the one of the other myths where this, there is a, a desired or a perfect body type. I mean, that's, that's just not true. We are, we're told that Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie and these people that are in front of our faces all the time from, you know, movies to media that there is a body type. I mean, heck, we've got once a year, we've got the, you know, the hundred sexiest men alive and the, you know, the sexiest women and things. And so we are constantly bombarded with this body type of toned, 
but there's not one. And that's that's our, you know, our 2010-ish decade of body type. Um, yeah, yeah. There's some really cool videos on YouTube that run through body types through the ages. Oh, that sounds fascinating. It's huge. I huge think of Marilyn change Monroe. and difference. Um, there's one that I particularly like with women, and it goes back to, oh my gosh, I think 1600s, mm-hmm. and then moves all the way up through to present day. And sometimes that's a helpful idea for people to realize that what's set out for them as the ideal right now is completely arbitrary. Yeah. If you lived in a different time period, there would be a different ideal. Sometimes that's a helpful idea to people to help them realize this ideal isn't personal. Yeah. This isn't something I have to aspire to. This is the fashion of the time it doesn't have anything to do with my worth. Yeah. Some people that's helpful for, some people it's not so helpful for because they're still like, well, but this is how you have to be accepted. That's how come if we come from that, if we work really on being okay with ourselves the way we are, it makes it much easier to see those idealized things for what they are. Mm -hmm. Instead of seeing them as something we have to become, we can just see them as, well, that's how they're selling things these days. Yeah. That's a great way to look at it. Well, that's how things are being sold right now. The market is changing that way. Kind of the same way with every year we have a fashion change. Mm-hmm. And we're keeping up with fashion trends and how mm-hmm. homes are, you know, what's what's going in the parade of homes. Mm-hmm. Everything along those lines. It changes. And you think about why does it change? Well, because demand needs to be created. Yes. So becoming a critical consumer of media is another action that people can take. When you see things, um, advertisements or media or things like that, to ask yourself some questions. What, what's the message here? Who is benefiting from the message? That's a really good question. Is this message to help me or is this message to help the producer and seller of this good? What's in it for me? Mm -hmm. What's in it for them? Yeah. Most of the media messages we get have more in it for the producer of those messages than they do for us. You know, I love makeup, but the makeup company has more to gain by their advertisement convincing me I need to buy their stuff Mm -hmm. than I do. That makes a lot of sense. So that can be a helpful... Thing as well to realize that there's a certain amount of manipulation that's happening here to benefit whoever's producing the message. Mm-hmm. And so being able to question that they're, allows you to They're do not it. really thinking about my, my best interest. They're no. thinking about how do we get her dollars away from her? Uh-huh. Yeah. How do we get, how do we get her to buy? How do we do yeah. this? How are we doing the buying? And that is the basis for a lot of the images that we see in the media, what's going to make people feel dissatisfied. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to give them the answer to that. Yeah. Here's the problem. It's this and we cream. have the answer. It's this diet soda. See, you do this and this is what happens. Mm-hmm. So then the other good question to ask ourselves, is this real? Does it make sense that if I drink this diet soda, I'm going to have this frolicking happy day on the beach? Yeah. How does that relate? And that also, are the people that I'm seeing in this ad real? If you've done any, seen any of the really interesting uh, Photoshop videos that are out there on YouTube showing what the real person looks like versus what the magazine cover looked like, mm-hmm. they don't even look like I watched the one original person. Where they did one in reverse mm-hmm. and the girl was a pizza. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Look it up on YouTube. It is so interesting. Where you're girl like, becoming a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> And they, so they did it in reverse. You know, they took a slice of pizza and bum, 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 did all this and stuff. And turned it into and a turned girl. turned it into a female, like this model. And you're like, oh my gosh, it's like, you'd be amazed. It's like, that is a pizza slice with pepperoni. <laughs> Holy cow. You can do anything with the, with, with Anything. That. So realizing that it's not real can sometimes help. How can you try to be like something that's not real? Yeah, right? You can't. You just can't. So thinking about media critically, what's in it for them, and also realizing to a great extent media is an art form. Mm -hmm. So 
art's not real life. No. It's designed to create emotions, reactions. What emotions are they after from me, from me here? Get critical. Being critical. One of the things that I, I found interesting interviewing Paige Smathers, which is earlier on in the podcast, um, I believe is episode nine, we were talking a little bit about how, I mean, as I've talked to bodybuilders and people that, that as of right now in the 2010 era have the body physique that people tend to, to strive for, and every single one of them have talked about, one, knowing what their flaws are, so they know, they're, they're like, I want to change this, and as they're focused so much on their body that it tends to cause problems with eating, that uh, she ended up doing, a uh, Paige Smathers was interviewing on the the nutrition podcast, she interviewed someone that was like, it got to a point that I would win these competitions, finish my, you know, the diet I was on and things along those lines and be so worried about losing this ideal that I would end up, um, I couldn't enjoy my favorite meal afterwards and I would feel like needing to throw it up. And that's when we start getting into the perfection, into eating disorders, into all these other things to try and obtain and maintain a perfect status and even in their mind, they're still not okay mm-hmm. with because, their body. Because losing weight or developing a particular body doesn't cure body image problems. Mm-hmm. It's body image problems are not about your body. They are about your head. Yeah. They're about your head. And I love that you mentioned perfectionism because working on um, developing an attitude of accepting our strengths and our weaknesses is really helped by avoiding three negative attitudes in particular. Yeah. And one of those is avoiding perfectionism, Mm -hmm. um, having ideals or standards that are impossible. Um, Another one is comparing, comparing ourselves to other people, comparing ourselves to media images, which we see, which as we've discussed, are not real. Mm -hmm. Um, And being highly critical or judgmental. The more critical we are, the harder it is to accept ourselves and we can practice. Sometimes it's easier to practice not being critical and judgmental of other people and then moving that to ourselves. Sometimes that can kind of flow over. Okay. So we can work on being accepting and not judgmental towards our good friend who we love Mm -hmm. so much. And then trying to help ourselves make that mental shift to, okay, how can I treat myself like I'm my best friend? Yeah. How can I treat my body like it's my best friend? Because really, it's with you all the time. And as we've mentioned, it's the way you experience the world. Mm -hmm. It is the best friend you have, regardless of what shape it's in. Definitely. You wouldn't even be here without it. (laughs) (laughs) So... Being able to be accepting of it makes it so much more enjoyable and pleasant way to experience the world. Yeah, definitely. So being able to have, avoid the perfectionism, avoid comparing, and also avoid being critical or judgmental. And I mean, we've covered so much today, Reva. I'm curious, you know, as we're wrapping up for today, I'm wondering what, if you could leave our listeners, um, any parents or any individuals with, uh, with something that you'd want them to take away from the show, what, what would that be? What do you really want the point to be in, um, that everyone understands? Yeah, I guess my big takeaway and this, I keep coming back to this idea because it's so easy to say the words and so hard to untwist the kind of brainwashing we've been through in our lives and our culture is that, we are okay right this very minute. Everyone who's listening to this podcast, you are okay right this very minute. You are okay with your weaknesses. You are okay with your flaws. You are okay with your strengths. You are okay and you don't have to wait to be able to feel that, to be able to believe that for yourself. You don't have to wait to accept yourself and you don't have to wait to be able to like your body because it's not about what size you are. It's not about what you can and can't do. It's not about what you look like. It is about accepting the body that you are in, not be 
not not in spite of it, but just because it is yours, is what you live your life in, that's what gives it value. That makes it worthy of appreciation. Just its existence. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. That is that's profound. So I'm I'm curious, Reva, what uh, if people want to get a hold of you, if they if they have questions specific to you or they want to come see you, how how would people get a hold of you or Probably one of the easiest ways to get a hold of me is through the Healing Group. Mm-hmm. Um, you can look at the Healing Group website. Healing Group, th- is it the? There's yeah, a the, the on the, it. He- the yeah. Healing Group.com. Um, they can email me at Reva at Healing Group.com. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm in the process of getting an Instagram account up and running that will be supportive of this. And it's called Love Your Real Life. Nice. Um, so it'd be at Love Your Real Life? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. That's one of those things where I'm accepting how my life is uh-huh. in working on that. <laughs> <laughs> and I would love to talk to people more about this. Um, next, I'm doing a couple of media spots okay. for KSL some more about body positivity. Mm-hmm. I'm also teaching a class on body positivity um, at the Live Well Center down in Provo. And we offer ongoing classes that kind of relate to body positivity. Wonderful. So, Those are some ways that people can get in touch with me. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much again for being on the show and talking to us about this important topic. Yeah, thanks, Braxton. All right. We can catch you on the next episode. Birds and Bees podcast. Thanks so much again for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you in the next episode. This has been another episode of the Birds and Bees podcast. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions about the show, comments, or questions you would like addressed in another episode, please give us a call at 385-449-1818. Leave your voicemail and your question, or you can also email us at birdsandbeespodcast at gmail.com, or visit us online at birdsandbeespodcast.com. <laughs>